Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Now, my first guest this morning, he is a very interesting man. He wears many different hats. He's been everything from an author to a skydiver to a search and rescue swimmer for the Navy. Now, the book cover that you see behind me, Letters from the Sandbox, this actually tells of his experiences in Iraq. During his time in Iraq, he was a security contractor. So in this book, there are unstold stories that we probably wouldn't hear about otherwise. Now, this book just talks about some of the many wonderful incidences that he's encountered during his life's great adventure. He likes to say that he's learned many things from life, and one of those things being that every day, it's a blessing. Charles, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for morning. having me. All right, Charles, I gave a little bit of your background, but I didn't even touch half of it. Uh, you are so interesting, Charles. Well, I'm a, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, my background is very diverse. I grew up in a small town in central Texas, called Fredericksburg, Texas, right in the middle of the hill country, very beautiful place. Um, I joined the Navy right out of high school in 1988 and became a search and rescue crewman, did combat search and rescue for the Navy uh, from Pensacola. It, almost every carrier on the East Coast came down here was my second duty station and was transferred to Cuba being my last duty station uh, Guantanamo Bay after that brief incident I was a fireman on NAS Boca Chica and uh, then I became a police officer for the Sheriff's Department down uh, down here in the Florida Keys working everywhere from mile marker zero all the way up to Key Largo I was on the SWAT team and the dive team mm -hmm. um, and that's where the adventures started uh, started going uh, awry, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I went over and worked with companies called uh, Blackwater and SOC as a security contractor in places like um, stateside. Here was during Hurricane Katrina and Rita. Mm -hmm. So during that that stint, I did everything Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and wherever the damage was, that's where they sent us. Mm -hmm. And that was the break from Iraq because I went to uh, Iraq in 2003, as I stated, and came back and worked for them and uh, did uh, did uh, private security work. Um, one of the main contracts that we worked on was called the CEA contract, which was confiscated enemy ammunition. And our main job in life was to go from base to base and clear out used or old ammo and mm -hmm. it didn't have to be used, it could be brand new, um, and it was anything from um, bullets to bombs to landmines, uh, you, you name it, we probably blew it up. Mm -hmm. And wow. we'd stack it in 110 ton pallets and light it off at about 3 o'clock every day. Wow. wow. Um, in 2006, October 11th, 11, or October 11th at 11, 11 a.m. was the life-changing event for me. Mm -hmm. I hit an IED about that big and it uh, went through the bottom of the truck, um, removing the bottom lower part of my leg, compound tib fib fracture. Um, came back and had to do some recouping on figuring out how I was going to adjust to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a different scenario. There was a whole lot of um, doubt uh, being the personality that I had I'd never received an injury that debilitating right. but because of my I guess intestinal fortitude and stubbornness <laughs> uh, I told the doctor we're I'm gonna keep the leg I'm gonna try to make it work and I figured that I could just make it through the doctor of course being who he was is a specialist on uh, traumatic injuries and amputations mm -hmm. he told me well you know it's probably gonna go away uh, sooner or later and I was going to just see who was more stubborn him or I. Um, <laughs> I kept the leg for about a year mm -hmm. and it just became so painful to walk on and, and use I made the the mental decision to have it amputated and uh, after they cut it off is probably one of the best decisions I made because then I was living pain free prior to that I was eating pain pills like Skittles. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what, Charles, we're, we're going to take a quick break right now, but we're going to talk more about this life-changing experience that you had, along with talking about your book, Letters from the Sandbox. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages.